Welcome to this demonstration on how to draw birds on a very small scale using pastels. Today I'm going to draw a seagull on the beach and some seagulls flying. I have finished the seascape painting first and now I want to draw the birds over the uh, pastel seascape. I usually work around my object so not to fill in the areas with color until I'm ready to work on these items. But today I will draw over the existing background and see how well I can achieve the right values and details of these birds. Working on a small scale can be challenging and sometimes I work with a magnifying glass. I still want to achieve a level of detail that represents a more realistic feel to the painting. These seagulls will vary in size from one and a half inches to two inches. This guy in the foreground is the largest of about two inches. I have drawn out the outlines of the seagull using my white pastel pencil. I used a dark gray for the darkest value in the seagull's body and I blended the color to see how well it was covering the base layer beneath it. I'll give him some legs and feet with my orange pastel. When working on such a small scale, it's important that you have a very sharp point on all your pastel pencils. I'm going to add the black feathers that are beneath his wings and on his tail feathers. I also want to shade his chest area to separate his body from the white water in the surf. I'll carefully draw in the shape of his eye. It's very small, basically just a few little marks to create it. I'll go ahead and define his beak. He has a black area in his beak and the rest I'll shade with some orange. So this is the basic shape and colors of the seagull. So now I want to develop the bird to give it some realistic details. I have brightened his head and chest with a very bright white pastel. The sun is casting light on his body and I want this highlight to stand out. I am shading with a lighter shade of gray around his head and neck area and I'm using a rubber tipped blending stick to blend the colors together. I'm trying to pay close attention to the shading around his body to ensure that I get the contours and shapes uh, accurately. I have noticed with many artists that once they achieve the basic shape and color of the birds on a small scale that they're satisfied with those shapes and do not add the extra details to bring the birds to life. I'm adding some more shading to the uh, feathers in the bird's body as the feathers overlap one another in the wings, they create some darker patterns in the feathers. 
I'll add some more black underneath the feathers here and blend it to achieve a little more contrast between the light and dark areas. I'm going to sharpen my black pastel and try to carefully add some of the shape to the bird's legs and feet. The front of the bird's legs will be a lighter shade than the back of the legs, so I'll blend this area with my rubber-tipped blending stick and add some more very light orange to the front of the legs and feet. Next, I'll add a little bit of shading behind the bird's feet and blend this out a little bit and this will complete the first seagull um, and I can always come back and add more details later. I've drawn out my seagull number two with my white pastel pencil. I've added a medium gray over the body of the seagull and blended it out with my white paper stump. The paper stumps work well to remove some of the excess pastel and blend the color into the paper. Since I am working over a green background, I do want to be careful not to spoil the, the value and color in the bird's body. I'm adding my dark shapes to the outline of the seagull's body and trying to outline the beak area. I'm shading underneath the wing with a very dark gray and because the shade seems to be a uh, dark enough value it's covering over the green base adequately. I'm going to finish the underside of the bird's body with some darker shading uh, along his belly and underneath the wings. And I'll use my rubber tip blending stick to blend this color. What I really like about the rubber tip blending sticks is that it, it really blends the colors together without removing colors like the paper stumps do. I think I've achieved a good uh, shade of gray in the bird's body and now I'm adding some of the white feathers that are uh, brighter because of the sun reflecting on his feathers. I hope the speed of this time lapse video is working well for you. I tried to slow down the level so that you could still see the details and progress I'm making as I draw these seagulls. I've tried to define the feathers in his wings with my light gray pastel. Next I'll add some of the white uh, feathers, details in his flapping wing, and a little more white in his tail and chest area. Next, I've zoomed up so I can work a little bit on his face, beak, and eye area. I'm switching to a yellow-orange pastel to block in his eye, his beak area, and his legs. I'll come back with a 
darker orange once I've completed the outlines of his beak and eye. I've sharpened my black pastel again so that I can begin shaping the contours around his eye and add some of the detail and shading to his beak. I'm going to shade with a very light blue around his face rather than using the light gray only. I've achieved some good detail in his face and now I'll add a little bit of a darker golden orange that represents the color in his beak and legs. I'm going to add a little more white pastel underneath his eye to help contour his face a little bit more. Here I'm bringing out some of the wing tips on his right uh, wing. I am outlining the bird's legs and feet a little bit to separate them. I'll blend this with the rubber tip applicator so that I don't have any sharp edges defining his legs and feet. And I'll add a little bit more of the uh, yellow and orange color to the bird's beak. And this finishes seagull number two. Seagull number three will be a little more challenging because I will be working over the darker blue pastel in the water. I am going to use a large uh, white stump to try and blend out some of the pastel in the background water area. You can see some of the dust building up as I rub out this color and I'm trying to remove the uh, pigment the best I can. I am outlining a shape I want to follow just with a pencil. That way I can come back with some rubbing alcohol and brush and brush over this area with the alcohol. Once the alcohol dries, I will be able to go over this area uh, with some more pastel and the background will not bleed through. I've also added some alcohol to the entire bird's body and I'll let this dry before I begin adding more color. I'm going to block in some wing feathers with my gray pastel following the direction of the feathers as the bird flaps its wings. I'll shade in this area with some dark gray just to see how well it will cover the background color. I want to define some of the darkest feathers first. I have to keep sharpening my pencil to add these fine lines between each feather
I'll fill in the rest of the wing with the dark gray pastel and, and blend this area together. I need to continue separating the feathers with my light gray and white along the tips of the long feathers. It is a little bit tedious to draw and shade between these very small feathers, but with a little bit of patience, um, the results are rewarding. I'm switching to a light gray to help extend some of the uh, feathers that are extending from underneath his wing. I'll extend some of these feathers into the wing to give it some contour and shape to give it a more rounded appearance. This area I'm blending will be the, the edge of the wing on his left side. I'm going to add some white pastel to the very tips of the feathers in his wing. going to move on to his body area a little bit. I'm using my white pastel to shape the top of his head. The light is reflecting off the surface uh, head feathers, so that's why I chose white. And now I want to try and contour the shape and colors of his body uh, a little bit more. I'll try blocking in the shape of his eye and define the shape of his beak a little bit. I'll continue with the black pastel to add some shading to the underside of his belly area and just below his wing. I'm going to add some black to his tail feathers and define the shape of his feet. I'm going to shade the area under here a little bit where his leg extends from his body. add some orange pastel to his legs and feet and try to create a separation between the two legs.
I'm going to extend some of these wing feathers here a little bit to the shape I'm drawing out. I'll extend the light gray into this pattern and blend a little bit. I'll also add some more dark uh, shading to the edge and this will help slope the angle of his wing. I'll add a little more light gray highlights to his wing area. I'm adding a little more black shading here on his wing to complete this seagull. I'm going to brighten up the white uh, feathers in the edge of his wing a little bit. I'll smooth out the hard edges a little bit along his um, belly area and this will complete our seagull. For this next uh, two seagulls I'm going to speed up the uh, time lapse a little more as I complete the seagulls. The gray pastel is covering the uh, blue water very well and I'm going to add some of the dark features in the bird's wing tips and tail feathers to give some shape to the body. These birds are further in the distance and are smaller and don't require a lot of detail in the feathers as long as I can achieve the correct values and contours to the bird's body this will be sufficient uh, for the background birds. The small details of the bird are a little more complex and require a very sharp pencil as I do this. This will be the last seagull flying out to sea. I hope you have enjoyed this video on drawing seagulls on a small scale. If you like this video, please press like and leave a comment below. I look forward to sharing more videos like this with you in the near future. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to be notified of all my new videos. Thank you and see you next time.